Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. A dire warning by a big bank and financial services company about the economy and about gold and silver. Let's explore. <laughs> You know, usually you would think by now that they would start to separate a bit, a little divergence from the bad economy talk and gold and silver prices tanking talk. But nonetheless, that's not the case with what Credit Suisse is being saying here recently. In fact, very recently, they came out with some uh, economics, uh, economic forecasting and its outlook. And we're going to talk a little bit about this in this video and try to answer the question as to why and when. In an already chaotic September, the worst is yet to come, according to Credit Suisse, which sees central banks counting on raising rates as economies face recession. I'm reporting to you from an article from Kidco that talks about this, Anna Golubova. And if you like content like this, where I talk about precious metals and the news, hope you will consider subscribing to the channel and encourage you to also like the video and thumb it up and share it. Economies around the world are at risk as central banks are forced to mercilessly tighten economic policy to slow down inflation, Credit Suisse said in its latest economic outlook. Higher rates combined with ongoing shocks to lead us to cut GDP forecasts. The euro area and the UK are in a recession. China is in a growth recession and the U.S. is flirting with recession. However, I disagree with that last statement. We are technically in a recession now, but we could come out of it a little bit, and they say that's quite a possibility in the short term, but nonetheless, Credit Suisse sees global GDP at 2.6% this year and 1.6% next year. For markets, this means the stocks and risky assets will see their conditions deteriorate even further as the year wraps up. Growth in the U.S. is expected to be close to zero this year and advance just 0.8% in 2023. Yes, indeed. So it's going to be pretty stagnant in 2023, but they think that we won't be in recession, but just barely out of one. There are growing downside risks to these forecasts, the report added. Crucially, the rising share of price categories above central bank inflation target levels shows inflation is broadening out from a limited group of supply shock related drivers to more general inflation. The broadening requires tighter policy and weaker economies because it increasingly reflects tight labor markets. Rate hikes by the Federal Reserve are yet to be felt by the U.S. economy as Thursday's jobless claims numbers still point to a strong labor market. And so that is something we are seeing now. Initial weekly jobless claims dropped by 16,000 to 193,000 in the week to Saturday, surprising the market with another unexpected contraction that marked its lowest level in five months. In light of this, Credit Suisse is projecting for the Fed to remain aggressive, with the federal funds rate likely peaking only at 4.5 to 4.75 percent. Calls for steep recessions have been growing as the third quarter comes to a close. This week, Stanley Drucken Miller, billionaire investor and founder of Duquesne Capital, has forecasted a hard landing for the U.S. economy in 2023 as the hawkish Fed proceeds with its tightening cycle. Our central case is a hard landing by the end of 2023, um, according to Drunken Miller. And uh, I will be stunned if we don't already have a recession in 23. I don't know the timing. But certainly by the end of 23, I will not be surprised if it's not larger than the so-called average garden variety. At the same conference, Citadel's billionaire founder Ken Griffin uh, com commented that his hedge fund is very focused on the possibility of a recession. But Griffin was slightly more optimistic, saying that the U.S. economy is still strong for people who are going to work every day. But this leads us to where gold and silver are. The Credit Suisse says that gold, silver, copper, and oil prices could fall 
on average of 13% or more. Commodities have confirmed a small head and shoulders top and we turn bearish on the asset classes, Credit Suisse technical analyst uh, led by managing director David Snedden wrote in a new note, we see enough technical evidence to change commodities as an asset class to negative on three to six month investment horizon. The analyst argued that our gold or oil rather could drop by nearly 30% for oil. Wow, that's huge. Um, it's facing the biggest potential decline with Brent crude possibly falling to as low as $63 a barrel, which is a 28.9% drop from Thursday's 88.66 level. Brent crude is now in, clearly broken below the 92.90 support area with 38.2% retractment. And so it gives in and talks about that, but that's a pretty big prediction for, for oil. That's the one that's going to be hit the most. Silver, though, is poised for a potential 17% decline. Credit Suisse's chartists see the recent failure of silver to top resistance at $21.39 an ounce as pointing to a pullback towards a $15.56 support level. That would represent about a 17% decline from metals Thursday's $18.71 pricing. Above $21.39 remains needed to negate the top, the analyst wrote. So there goes my prediction for $29 silver by the end of the year. But hey, I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. Copper could shed 15.5%, really moving in line with silver, as they are saying here. That's pretty interesting. And gold could fall nearly 14%, they're saying. Credit Suisse wrote that gold has already confirmed a major double top. The metal could fall to as low as $1,440 per ounce. That represents a 13.7% decline from Thursday's $1,660.60 level. We expect further weakness at $1,600, then at $1,560, and eventually at gold's March 2020 low of $1,450 um, one or fourteen forty, the analyst wrote, only a convincing break above the fifty-five day moving average of seventeen twenty-five would ease the pressure on the precious metal. And I think that's a real possibility we could recapture that. But who knows? But the question is is how could this happen? Well, I guess based off of the run to the safety of cash, these increasing rate increases without hurting the job market as much as they think it should is going to lead people to have further strength in the dollar and the bond yields going up, putting pressure on gold and silver and even all commodities because people are running to the safety of cash. You think about it with, with copper kind of running in between there, uh, falling 15.5%, you're going to see silver fall in line as a commodity and be hurt and hit hard as well as falling along with gold. And so therefore, when people run to the safety of the dollar, the dollar index rising, that's going to put this massive pressure on gold and silver, especially if we do hit into a deeper recession in time. If we're barely in a recession now and we barely come out of one in 2023, that's going to put more pressure on gold and silver and people are going to have more confidence in the dollar uh, and uh, the tightening policy will continue without seemingly hurting the economy for a while. That means that's how it could occur. And... Um, and why it will happen, especially with the economy being as fragile it is, as it is now, and notwithstanding any other further geopolitical de developments that we've talked about on this channel, um, why it would happen is because of the lessened fear or the numbing feeling, people becoming desensitized to geopolitical events and other factors that have come into play. And also, we have to think about where, where people will stand with the elections. If the Republicans take over the Houses of Congress, that might be a stopgap for some of the uh, increased spending, and that could have confidence in the dollar and cause for a more stable dollar as well, too, putting even further pressure on gold and silver. So that's how and why we can continue to see depressed gold and silver prices well into 2023. And that will probably shape what my feelings are going to be for gold and silver by the end of 2023 as well which means that I may have a much more uh, stable prediction rather than the 
more uh, radical ones that I had in the past two years where I've been completely and utterly wrong. But the thing is, is whenever I give predictions, it's merely just for fun, just for the fun of it. No one should ever make any decisions based off of what I say about gold and silver. Do your own due diligence and research. But nonetheless, that's where it is. But the thing is, is you have to be, you have to understand that these metals do fluctuate. We can see them fall. Every purchase I make of gold and silver, I purchase it with the understanding that they could fall even more. You have to be prepared for that, folks. But you're better having it than not, in my view, because of how quickly things could shift and change. And they can shift and change very quickly. They have in the past and they will again. So therefore, it's always good to have rather than have not. If you don't feel comfortable purchasing and you have a fair amount of gold and silver, don't do it. Don't ever purchase uh, any gold or silver that you don't feel comfortable holding. and Or if you don't, you can't take the brunt of the massive hit that we could see. Now, are they right? I don't know. Likely not. A lot of these predictions do tend to not uh, pan out the way they think, may, whether it be timing or what have you. Obviously, they have some analysts that, that know something about the economy and can make these moves. But everybody's been wrong before. And everybody's been right before to some level or some degree. I've even been right a time or two. It does not mean you should take any financial advice from me. The only financial advice you should take from me is to be careful with your dollars and be careful with your gold and silver. In other words, you know, be fiscally responsible. You know, you've heard the ancient, the old adage to pay yourself first. I say, screw that. Pay off your debts first. Get out of debt first and then save save in the form of, of these depreciating notes, these debt instruments for those emergencies that you need uh, so that you don't have to spend your ultimate savings. Gold and silver are a savings of last resort. More on that later. But nonetheless, gold and silver, you hold in your hands. Your dollars you have for a rainy day or in, for a need, for an emergency. And gold and silver should be uh, something that you have um, that you can come out with ahead or uh, or break even with, rather. Uh, but you can come out ahead with them in some time, and depending on how you buy certain times. But nonetheless, there it is. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.